Welcome back to another Geek Watch video. Today I'm discussing the topic as requested by a viewer, um, air, liquid versus air cooling. If you do have a suggestion or a request for a video, drop it in the, the, uh, the comment section below and if I think it will benefit the audience, I'll be sure to give it a go. So, before the fanboys start out or people get fixated that their idea is right, just listen to the points on offer and then make an informed decision and informed conclusion at the end of the video. For, for straight out performance, let's get rid of the elephant in the room. Liquid cooling or water cooling will win 99% of the time. So now you're thinking, okay, liquid cooling must be better. In scenarios, in real life scenarios and real world performance, that isn't always the case. Performance figures don't often give a conclusive answer and they can often be very misleading. Liquid coolers are much more expensive with a decent 240mm radiator going for around $100 and a top end Noctua silent air cooler going for around $35 to $60 range. Air coolers get even cheaper however with the most renowned air cooler, the Hyper 212 Evo from Cooler Master costing only $25. You also have to think about compatibility. You will always find a compatible air cooler from low profile models just inches high to much larger units. You do have to be beware, beware you do have to beware of memory clearance when it comes to air cooling, however. Liquid coolers aren't so simple. You need a 120 or 240 mm mounting point for the radiator, somewhere where the tubes reach, the fan connectors can reach the headers, and it has to be thick enough to allow a fan on one side of the radiator or both if you go and push pull. Noise is also something I've touched briefly on. Liquid coolers also use fans to cool the radiator which the liquid flows in. Air coolers have fans to cool the heat sink, so you're thinking the same amount of noise, right? Wrong. Liquid coolers often have the world's crappiest bundled fans, and the pump which moves the water around the system can often be noisy and create a noticeable whine. The whine may only be low pitched and make low frequency sounds, but it's that low frequency sound that will really get to your head and will really irritate you, especially after prolonged use. So, the conclusion, water coolers are expensive and there is a risk of them leaking and killing your entire system with water damage, but the chance is very small and if you plan on doing an enthusiast grade system, I recommend them over air every day of the week. They're also great for overclocking, but you do have to remember, especially at the budget end, are you going to get, if you save $75 and bought an air cooler rather than a liquid cooler, how much extra CPU performance could you get out of the box before overclocking? Air coolers won't quite be out of performance yet, but they certainly come close. So look at your budget, look at your build, and see which option suits you best. If you have found this Geekwatt video helpful, drop a like rating below, and do remember to subscribe. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next Geekwatt video. The video you've just been watching is all part of Gigawatt's Big Summer. Check the links in the description below for 50 videos over 42 days and 6 weeks. The idea is to get loads of tech related content up from tech terminology, tech reviews, tech news, PC builds, uh, tech topics, along with a load of Windows 10 content and my budget build guide 2015 and how to build a, ba a gaming PC 2015 tutorials. We'll see you in the next Gigawatt video and I'll see you over on Twitter with hashtag Gigawatt's Big Summer.